Welcome everybody to the Seclair Chatterbox, the show where we talk about what's on our mind and the topics of the day and our experiences. I am Michael Sorg, Director of Web Media here at Seclair, and uh, we're going to be doing a series here where we're talking about some of the services that are offered here at Seclair and Z Harmony, and uh, the first of them is yoga. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and rightly so. <laughs> Top of the list of good things. <laughs> so let's go around the table and see who we got on with us today. Okay, I am Julie Margo. I am the Reiki Master here at Seclair. You have to wait your turn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm waiting my turn. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm the Reiki Master here at Seclair. I also work with essential oils, and um, I have experienced yoga here at Seclair. <laughs> I'll leave it at that for now. Yeah. <laughs> that okay. experienced yeah. word. Yeah. I am Mary Angela Mancuso, and I am a certified yoga teacher. I teach the yoga group classes here. I am yoga therapist here, uh, one-on-one with the uh, patients. And I also teach yoga up at Torrance St. Uh, Hospital, and I am a Pilates teacher also. I'm Deb Dietrich. I am a participant in yoga classes and Zumba classes. Okay. And I am Carol Scheffler. I teach the Zumba here at St. Clair. We just started that up in the last couple months. Um, it's like every other Wednesday and um, do Zumba. And I also am a yoga instructor as well register yoga teacher and I teach yoga in the community so Excellent. for those curious we are going to be talking about Reiki and Zumba in the in future episodes so stay tuned for that uh, but yoga is the topic of the day so uh, <laughs> well first uh, you know what uh, can you uh, uh, tell us why why yoga why did you gravitate towards yoga why did I gravitate towards yoga well it was completely by accident mm -hmm. and this was back in 1996 um, I have uh, I had a lot of physical issues going on, a lot of uh, health issues, and I was losing the use of my hands. I couldn't touch things. I had neuropathy at that time for about 13 years, and I was um, told I was going to lose the use of my hands. And I, I it just hurt to touch anything. I didn't have uh, any idea what to do. I certainly didn't want any of the surgeries uh, they were offering out. And I accidentally saw a yoga program. And I thought it was the silliest and dumbest thing that I had ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> this is a great start, by the way. <laughs> and I said, man, they talk really funny. I said, what's so hard about stretching, okay? <laughs> and so um, I didn't really you know, get engaged in it. It was, a, it was a program on cable, and I just thought that and watched a little bit. But I was really intrigued. Something about it kind of struck me. So a following week, I saw another program. And I started to do it. And that was when the magic happened because that just talked to me. It said, you better do this. You need to do this. Mm -hmm. And I did. And I did it every single day from that point on. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I did it because it was just, I needed that emotional support. I needed just to be centered. I just needed that kind of help in my life at that point. So I did it every single day. I did it at three in the morning if I had to. And about a, um, a year later, I started to notice that my hands were feeling better. They were in no way cured at all, but they started to feel better. I could lift my arms up higher. I could touch things and it didn't hurt as much, even though it still hurt, because I would have shooting pains up and down my arms for hours. I couldn't touch things. From that point on, I just never stopped doing it. Just kept going on and on and on and on with it until some um, many years later, um, Someone asked me if I ever thought about teaching yoga. And I said, no, what do I know about yoga? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, said, I don't know anything about yoga. And then um, I accidentally saw an ad for a yoga training. And I said, well, that must be my sign to go and um, take the yoga training. So that was what I ended up doing. And it was just like magic. It was like my calling. It was like my thing to do. And in the meantime, by the time I got up to that point where the training was, this was many years later, um, yoga had helped me to such a great degree, put me back together. It allowed me to um, be the person I wanted to be inside, and it finally allowed me to step out as that person to start to address the things that were a problem in my life so that I could go and get some help and start to really just start uh, my total healing that way. But yoga was my catalyst for that. That's how powerful the yoga was for me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, that you're a, you're a participator in the yoga. I am a participant. Uh, what, uh, what, what brought you to it? Carol brought me to it. <laughs> 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 <All her fault. laughs> and I had tried it originally when Carol first offered it in our area. And thought, this is not for me. Then I thought, well, we'll try it again. And I did. And I've also tried with Mary Angela, and I love it. It's just, yoga just does. It takes me out of where I am. It helps me to relax. It helps me to be a better person, I think. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so, and, and you guys, you guys have participated in yoga as well? Oh, yeah, yes, participate. Absolutely. <laughs> I probably started in my 20s when I had four young children, and I used to shut the door, and the boys knew, leave mom alone. She's doing her yoga right now. <laughs> she needs her time to be by herself and just to take it take it in, you know, just have that moment of silence and quiet that we in life are so busy that we don't get a chance to check in. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a time to check into your individual self and kind of what you um, – it's that intuition that you don't get a chance to listen to if you're too busy and you're just doing and doing. And uh, so if you don't take time to be quiet, to go there, and yoga brings helps me go there, that's all. Um, it's also physically very healing. And um, with all the uh, Zumba that I love to do, I probably could not do it if I didn't have yoga to do with it because yoga really keeps me able physically to do the Zumba. <laughs> Definitely, you know, so they, they kind of go hand in hand yeah. in my life, you well. know. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I agree with what you were saying about the uh, being able to really be present mm -hmm. um, with have, allowing those insights to come through. And it's kind of a moving meditation for me. Uh, and I really can feel the energy change when I start doing the yoga. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that about yoga and about Mary Angela in particular she's just the kindest most gentle teacher <laughs> which I really appreciate it because before I came here to Seclair I had done yoga with um, some tapes and you know you see things on television and you try and you think oh I really want to be able to do that and uh, I hadn't put a whole lot of time and, and energy into learning it and coming after coming here and going to Mary Angela's class she just makes it so almost intuitive the way the way you describe what position you're looking for us to be in it just makes sense to me and I really appreciate that yeah. well, thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> but I, I would pick bring up the point that you addressed there about um, tape versus a uh, live class mm -hmm. I mean tapes are quite uh, valid that was how I started you know people say how who, who, who where did you do your training well I didn't do training anywhere I was in no mental state to even go out of the house okay mm -hmm. so I did all my things at home and but I always say I had the best teachers of the day though because they were all the top people in the field you know mm -hmm. uh, in, they had the day. tapes yeah they had the tapes, <laughs> yeah, right. they had the tapes. Yeah. but that was my huge question was how do they get from A to B what are they doing to get to that how are they in that position because there certainly isn't all that instruction on a tape like you get in a group class and I just uh, kind of like dissected those tapes and, and dissected them until I could just really, I knew them all in my head. So teaching was not a huge jump because I had a patterning already. Yeah. But yeah, the, the difference between tape and class, uh, to me, tapes are really beneficial. They're great and wonderful, but there's just magic that happens in a class. Because when you're with a group of people that, like you said, the energy, the mm -hmm. connection of the energy starts to go and flow around the room and you start to play off of each other. And my most favorite yoga classes are when all these disconnected people, meaning they don't really know each other, except maybe a few of them know each other from class. And all of a sudden you just see that little magic happen where they're all just moving intuitively together mm -hmm. through a class. It's just mm -hmm. like, it's, that's the magic that begins to happen in some yoga class, a connectedness, mm -hmm. that then it, it is uh, a, a deeper level of, of mm -hmm. an experience than mm -hmm. just that physical posture. Yeah, I yeah. felt that. And there also <laughs> seems to be a feeling of, of mutual support. Yeah. We can mm -hmm. do it. We can. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Work together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we talked a lot about what kind of what it means here, what it would have got everybody into it. Uh, we did a series of videos that's up on the Claire website. Uh, 
And one of the things we <laughs> tried to do was what are the things keeping people from trying yoga? Uh, what were some of the, uh, the misconceptions about yoga. Oh, well, it's just that, that it that you have to be a contortionist to do it. That all those extreme <laughs> things, all that all those extreme poses are normal. That's one thing that that I do get upset with media for even though mm-hmm. yoga is promoted nowadays in media, I really don't like what they what they put out. What do you think? I because totally it's just, agree. It's just too, I, it's not the I stuff followed that goes on something about. on the media and I was like, "Yeah, right. Like the average Joe can do this. Yeah. I can hardly do yeah. this." Well, you the know, best and line I I never got about that kind of stuff was from my doctor because I was talking that subject with him uh-huh. one time. <laughs> Please forgive me, world. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> this is what he told me. <laughs> he said that a lot of the, he said most people that you find that can do that type of extreme things with their bodies they have collagen disease. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I said, yay! I'm normal. I'm yeah. stiff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, then I'm normal too. Yeah, I'm normal. Yeah. normal here, lady. Exactly. Normal. Normal. But yeah, I mean, there's such a thing as having great flexibility, but there's a fine line with right. with the next. And I'm sure we've all seen it because I have. They have a particular body type, you know. Right. And uh, but yeah, the the thing. One of the big things people say, I'm not flexible. I can't do that. Well, yoga helps you get whatever flexibility your body is going to give. <laughs> give you will more. be surprised what it can give. And you don't have to do extreme stuff because no. you're just working range of motion in the joints. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is all that you're really doing. Mm-hmm. And, and, and one happens. of the things too, I think the media does as well is they put the most difficult pose when you can do something so much simple and get the same effect physically yeah. Yeah. and emotionally, do you know, like your chest openers. I mean, sometimes they go into extremes like that, you know, and, and you could, and I know that rooms, they're going to look at like, I can't do that, but you can take them into a pose that everyone can do. Mm-hmm. And we're all still getting that same benefit of doing a chest opener, yeah, but it's done in a simple everyday way, mm-hmm. you know, and, but I find the media will take you out to the extreme. Yeah, and I, and I think that what turns people off. They're like, I can't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? As, as visual as it, um, can be excitingly visual as it is, it can be a turn off. Even a lot of the popular yoga magazines have so much of that. And, they, and not enough is promoted about regular people doing yoga right. that is as beneficial. Because I certainly didn't do anything extreme when I was doing yoga that benefited I me. I really couldn't. I just did what I could do, mm-hmm. you know, and that's mm-hmm. really the thing. But, um, yeah, that's like one of, one of the topics. And um, and it, it goes on like um, not wanting to get down on the floor is another big one that prevents people from coming in. You know, they don't want to be on having a mat class. Well, yoga can be adapted to chair, mm-hmm. you know. Yoga can be adapted to bed if you're bedridden. Yoga can be ad- adapted to all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to all sorts of things. I deal with a lot of special conditions. That's one of my things that I love to do is work with people that have uh, that feel they have their limitations mm-hmm. in a way, chronic pains and things like that. And it and yoga can always be adapted to mm-hmm. be safe and doable to anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it can be adapted in the water as well. Yeah, water okay. yoga is very yeah. Yeah, oh, I mean nice. there's laughing yoga if all you want to do is sit and laugh. There's I laughing yoga. <laughs> We have a friend that comes to the cafe, and uh, she usually comes in after hot yoga. Yeah, mm-hmm. hot yoga. Can mm-hmm. you explain hot yoga? It's, it's, it's done in, with the room at a certain temperature? Yeah, the room is at uh, a very elevated temperature. If you're doing brick gram, what is it, 100 degrees or something uh-huh. higher uh-huh. than that, which to uh-huh. me would be kind of great because you know, uh, I love hot, hot temperature. Uh, it's a good yoga, but you need to be careful. There's some parameters with that that you need to be careful with, uh, sper- certainly dehydration. You know, you mm-hmm. need to hydrate. You need to really hydrate so you don't have a, a heat issue going on with you but there. But if you're yeah. going through change, that's probably the last thing you want to do is go yeah. into a hot room. <laughs> yeah. If you have certain physical conditions yeah. or, or uh, you know, chronic uh, issues, that's not the best kind of yoga to be doing in, in those hot rooms. Mm-hmm. Now, if you happen to have a lot of muscle tension, yes, that would be very nice. Um, but you have to be very careful that you know your limits between when am I stretching muscle and when am I getting into ligament stretching? Right. Because I know some people that, that have right. overdone it and they have overstretched their ligaments right. and now they have different issues going mm-hmm. on. Not that hot yoga is bad, you know, because everybody has a different flavor, but you just have to be know what what is good in so, going so on in your body. Are you saying that with the hot yoga you might... Overstretch. Overstretch oh, because yeah. you're not paying yeah. attention. You pay attention differently with the heat. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because you know, you know how you are when you're heated up, you can stretch quite well mm-hmm. and move. And mm-hmm. so then you go to your, a, a high, a deeper level. Like when you're pregnant and you have relaxin and you go like, oh, all of a sudden I have all this flexibility. And then we go, don't do that. 
because you're going to ruin your ligaments. It doesn't mean that you have it. It just means that you don't feel it or something like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. to that degree. Yeah. And that's kind of a, a, a similarity in my mind in what happens in a, in a hot yoga. Okay. Thank yeah. You. But yeah, not, again, not that. that hot yoga is bad because there's all sorts of yogas out there that suit everybody. But mm-hmm. that's kind of what it is about. The room is very heated up. And if you're doing a Bikram, there's what, 26 poses they go through. It's a standardized 26 poses. And other hot yogas might be considered warm yogas compared to that, but mm-hmm. they, they're not as uh, heated. Uh, when you do the yoga mm-hmm. but what I've done just to experience it because I've never gone to a pure hot yoga class is I go um I, w- I was at a gym I would just go in the sauna and do yoga in a sauna and what okay. was really f- <laughs> what was really nice about that it had a glass door because this was in the women's locker room so I'm in there doing my yoga and I would get an audience I felt like I was a museum exhibit <laughs> <laughs> Sure, sorry. Sure, sure. Everybody's standing there looking at me, and then I was in the dim light. I go, okay, maybe I should pose, you know? <laughs> so, a wax museum. <laughs> you need that record recording and the lights to yeah. start. Good thing there wasn't a window on the steam room because I did it in there too. <laughs> that would have been a little embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Aww. laughs> what, are, what are some of the other interesting types of yoga? <laughs> now that everybody has Steve this vision. Yoga. Yeah, really yeah. interesting. <laughs> Say, now that everybody has this vision in their head. Um, <laughs> um, you mentioned, I think you mentioned briefly chair yoga. I mean, this yeah. is for, so really, this is very accessible for, to people. I mean, well, oh, you very know, much I mean, so. especially talking about how you got started. Um, that, you know, maybe, maybe intimid- that's for the most intimidated, I would think. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you sit in your chair and start doing some stretches. I did a couple classes this morning up at the hospital that way mm-hmm. in a chair. Um, it can suit all sorts uh, because people think that you can't get an exercise in a chair. Mm-hmm. You can ramp mm-hmm. up a chair exercise mm-hmm. where I've had younger people that have not had issues said, this is really hard. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it can be. So don't be fooled just because you're using a chair as a prop, sitting in it, standing with it, you know, beside it or something like that. But yeah, it, but the chair also, if you're new to yoga, it gives you a nice sense of uh, stability, mm-hmm. a nice sense of, of being a little more in command of yourself because you're not on the floor. You're not being uh, having to address a lot of balance issues even. And if you have any kind of a chronic uh, problem going, uh, not even like to say problem, but a chronic issue um, with yourself, the chair can provide a safe place to begin. And then also it's good for the people at work who can't get out of their chair yeah. mm-hmm. and find a way to uh, get like a little bit of the, movement while they're yeah, sitting while in a chair. Isn't that the, uh, they promote mm-hmm. calisthenics, is it, at work now? <clears throat> like, is, isn't that like the chair exercise kind of thing? I'm not familiar with that. Well, I just know just... yoga. <laughs> I know yoga in the chair room. Yeah. Zumba in the chair. So, yeah, we did chair Zumba. Yeah, exactly. It was quite effective. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah, you could, because it's not just about moving arms. You do a total body movement even though you're mm-hmm. seated in a chair because mm-hmm. you get leg strengtheners that start getting the, the, the blood running through the leg muscles. So if you happen to be sedentary for whatever reason, weaker legs, or if you happen to be wheelchair bound, but yet your legs are still movable, that's a real nice way to stay, to have some function, stay mm-hmm. down in those legs, mm-hmm. toes, all that. You lose, you lose the mobility of your toes and the, and the openness of your feet. You've lost balance. You've lost mobility. You've lost a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you always want to want to be able to to move whatever <laughs> extremities you can move. Mm-hmm. And chair doesn't mean that you can't do it. Mm-hmm. Now I've always I don't know if this is a brand thing I saw, but I, I'm always interested. Um, right above a pizza place in the South Hills, I pass every day. Uh, there's a power yoga. Is that a type of yoga, or is it, is it just a brand thing? Yeah, well, it's more of a type than than like a Bikram hot yoga, which is a, okay. a trademarked type of a yoga. Okay. Um, from from my experiences anyway, and I taught a power yoga. And it's just, you know, a ramped up yoga. Um, p- different people have different ways that they approach it. And the way that I did it was that um, it wasn't so much that you're holding poses. Yes, you're, you're holding them, but when you were in them, you were doing something in them. You know, if you're, uh, you had arm movements, you had um, different transitions in and out of poses. It was a repetitive, po- a repetitive series of poses, almost like salutation, um, but more like um, a vinyasa than a salutation. Mm-hmm. So um, I see your eyebrows going up. You don't know Sanskrit. Then you're out of luck. Well, then you're out of luck. You're on the saying, wrong show. For those in the audience that might not know Sanskrit, <laughs> he's 
I'm not saying that he doesn't. <laughs> Maybe uh, we should explain. <laughs> vinyasa <laughs> means flow. <laughs> Connected poses that flow. That's vinyasa. What was the other word I used? I don't even know. <laughs> salutation. <laughs> salutation. Okay. Yeah. A sun salutation is a salute. Salutation is salute mm-hmm. to the sun. And that's a particular set of 12 poses. And they vary what the poses are. But it takes you from standing down to the mat and back up again. It's very aerobic. People mm-hmm. that say that yoga is not aerobic... Do a hundred and eight of those like you're supposed to on the, on the solstice, and you're going to be really tired. <laughs> you're going to be really, yeah. You'll have a good workout, but salutations get get the body really rolling. You can get a good sweat in power yoga. You can get a good sweat in mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of what power mm-hmm. yoga is about. It's just making it a little more of an, uh, to, in my mind, to an aerobic experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the other things uh, I know we talked about when we were doing the videos was uh, guys have trouble getting into yoga. I, I'm surrounded <laughs> by women today, ironically. Well, yeah. you never were in my yoga, Mike. What happened? After all this discussion we had. <laughs> it's on film. <laughs> I swear it's a distance thing. I'm looking into that power yoga back home. <laughs> But um, but but that that's uh, I mean that's that's a uh, well, what what is the ratio of, of men versus women you see in your oh, class? What do you think, it Carol? It's, it's it pretty low. Yeah, it it's, is. It, it, I over, have overall. It's I would have low. one out of six. Yeah. Like I have this one fellow that comes every week, so I know he's going to be there. Yeah. But his wife's there too. As yeah. Well. But when I was down at um, the gym, I went on a campaign. Guys are going to come into yoga class. <laughs> <laughs> so I went down into the weight area in the weight room and you know did my stuff. Come into yoga. Come into yoga. <laughs> yeah. And started to educate them what yoga was really about. Mm-hmm. And these are blue collar <laughs> blue collar steel town guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it, so we threw down the towel and we were ready to <laughs> ready to have the challenge. <laughs> so then I proposed an all guys class because they were more t- intimidated about coming in with a room full of women and looking foolish. Mm-hmm. Which is what a lot of which is another bar- basic barrier for everybody. They feel they're going to be foolish in front of a crowd of people. Mm-hmm. But when you're in a yoga class, you don't even know who's ne- standing mm-hmm. next to you because that's how focused you get. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's going on in that mat right. next to you. Yeah, I close so. my eyes and I just yeah. I'm into me. Yeah, not what you're doing or you're doing i'm into me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we got the guys class going you know and uh they came in and and they started so i said okay i'm really going to get a bit guy stuff we're going to do you know i really you know i i have a um we have have a mutual friend uh is Mm -hmm. a guy yoga Mm -hmm. instructor actually two which is really unusual Mm -hmm. we carol and i taught at the same studio and we had two guy teachers which was like really unusual Mm -hmm. two guys and they were friends of ours so i conferred with my one buddy and he said, oh, you know, do push-up stuff. Guys love push-up stuff. Do push-up stuff, of yoga push-ups. I said, okay, I will, fine. So we go in there, I get the guys started, and I changed my language from a lot of the flowery language that we tend to do in a yoga class. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, I can't tell them that they're lovely and, you know, they want to open their heart to the universe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't go, you know. You know. So I stuck with more of that, you know, give it your strength. You know, put that strength on the breath. And all. <laughs> Stand strong in that asana. Uh, (laughs) So I changed the language, yeah. And it it went went really well. I mean, we had a room full of guys. had about nine of them on the first class, you know. And so it went really well. So now here comes the push-up stuff, you know. Well, what I started to find out was don't make complicated um, vinyasas. Don't make complicated flows. Keep it really simple. Like Mm -hmm. do the right side for a pose and then go to the left side for a pose. Then go back to the right side for something. Mm -hmm. If I went from the right side, because I, 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 the way I teach, I'm very connected. I, I, that's one of my patterns for flow. So we might do like four or five on the right side connected. And then we may do a different thing in the middle as a pause, like a salutation, and then go to the left. No, not not for the guys' class. <laughs> no. <laughs> them in the straight no. now. Oh. One side, maybe two. We got up to like two or three. But then after, of course, they were in the class, they started to adapt and go. They were brand new to it. So we get to the push-up stuff. I'm thinking, oh, boy, I've got them now. I'm going to do the push-up stuff. We're doing really good. So I put them in a plank. And I had to turn around because of... I faced the class. They got confused what was happening, so I had to put my back to the class and do stuff. And I turned around, looked at them, I said, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you guys doing? We're in a push-up. What are you doing? <laughs> oh. so, so we got through 
that and well, they said, oh, well, well that, you know, they should be able to do a side plank, you know, one arm on the side, just push up stuff. So I cued that and I had to turn my back again. I cued that and I turned and I said, I just stood there looking at them. I said, that's nowhere even close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the push up stuff wasn't the best to do, but it was an education as to how um, <laughs> a women's class as versus the guys class really was structured in a way. Mm-hmm. But then after a whole year, I go into the class the one day and they go, how come no women are allowed in this class? <laughs> no, <Jane. laughs> That was how they said it. Mm-hmm. They said, well, because you didn't want them. <laughs> they said, yeah, well, well, we know what we're doing yeah. now, so we're yeah. ready to come yeah. back. Now, so now, now they want to show off. Yeah, yeah, so now, exactly. they're so now let so the then, girls come. So then I said, well, would you like this to be a co-ed class? Yeah, and the women are going to be up in the front. <laughs> <laughs> So then I knew a couple ladies were out in the gym because they were asking me, how come ladies aren't allowed in that class? (laughs) I said, shh, you guys are sensitive, okay? (laughs) (laughs) So I called them in. I said, hey, you want to come in tonight? Come on. You know, we're co-editing the class. So from that point on, it was co-ed. And it was really great. It, it, that was a real well-attended guys class. But the guys liked the power yoga, too. They really enjoyed yeah. coming in the power yoga. So that's my story about guys class. That's, <laughs> good. that's, that's good. That's good. <laughs> but, yeah, technically yeah. they can do amazing things in yoga. You know, it's not just a women's thing because it started with men. It was a men's practice yes. for, oh, how long? You, yes. you know, eons of time. But, yeah, it just kind of flipped over to being um, a women's uh Connect, they, women connected to it, um, especially in Western culture, because it's, it's not that, it's yeah. not manly to you know to do these kind of positions. Until the guys were really surprised. They said, "This is really hard." Yes. And I said, "Yeah, it is." I said, yes. "Because you don't work balance when you're out there doing weights, or you're running, or you're biking, or you're swimming. Swimming, well, not so much swimming, but still." You're focused on a set of muscles. You're focused on a set of muscles, and even though you're stretching, you think in your mind and balancing out. You're not balanced because guys have no core. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. (laughs) I'm sure I have no core. Yeah, that's that's. that's, I uh, because when you know, anytime I think about you know going, it's like I need. I should join gym. I should start working out. The first thing I think is I gotta hit the weights or something because that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So that was one of my sales pitches. (laughs) And you know, it's amazing too with the yoga. You don't realize how that core gets stronger and stronger and stronger as you practice. Mm -hmm. It really does. It takes you. You know, you get the. You start a yoga practice, and the guys would, but if they stick to it, if you keep the practice going, it just you just you develop. You don't realize how you do. So you, you you just in your mind say, "Man, when I first started that, I couldn't even do that." Yeah, and mm-hmm. it comes very easily, and you're just like, "Wow, where'd that come from?" Yeah, so. yeah. I always say guys have arms and legs, but they don't have core. Mm-hmm. And and then and then like I say, they they they're looking at this other. A lady here next to them on the map who um, their terminology was the housewife type okay and she's doing amazing things you know which they didn't kind of which um, theoretically strength wise wouldn't you wouldn't think of think that but because she's organized with her core she can mm-hmm. and it's just a different way of connecting into the body but if you use yoga as a regular practice for you as a guy, you don't have to like it. Just do it, please, because mm-hmm. it will allow you to be better at everything that you really right. like. You'll lift weights better because you're right. going to coordinate breath better and have range of motion better. Right. Uh, you get all those muscles that you bulk up, you're losing range of motion. And that's just as bad as if you were old and had arthritis. Mm-hmm. So right. it makes you, it allows you. I always call yoga as a, a base for any kind of activity in your life. Right. Mm-hmm. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mentioned a little bit about uh, you know uh, the flower universe stuff, the spirituality of of yoga. Some people get confused thinking it's a religious well, type of thing. It's funny you should bring that up. One of the boys at the hospital said uh, they we've been trying to get him in, and um, he came through and they said, "No, I don't want to do that." And I go, "Why?" It's because it's a religion. It's a religion. And I said, "And I said, excuse me, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that it's not. There's two yogas. There are two yogas." Uh, one yoga is, is what has come to be the most popular in our day now. It's not, Actually, yoga is now considered transnational um, physical culture. And our modern yoga that is the most common that you'll see is the physical practice, where you're doing um, postures, 
that are gymnastically inclined and, and they have a flavor of contortionism to them. Those are yoga's roots. Okay, that's what yoga's roots really are. Um, the other yoga is the philosophical side. The philosophical side that talks about uh, a code of ethics for us with ourselves and with the and with um, you know the environment and with cultures, and what else would you describe the spiritual side as? Uh, you know mm-hmm. the philosophical side of, um, of 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 attaining a peace with yourself mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. opening up to your spiritual side. Anything yeah, you would? Yeah, but it, it's really weird because even though. And I I will say I've been touched with my own views, religion-wise, with the yoga practice. I kind of, I brought it in myself, though, you know, so I can be any, I think you can be any affiliation religious, like I'm I'm Christian, but I can, Mm -hmm. at times, and I know you've experienced that in your practice, where I do kind of bring it in spiritually because it does touch you spiritually. Mm-hmm. Sometimes doing the physical postures and even the positions that you yeah. get into, it does touch you. But it, I use my own faith yeah. in my practice, yeah. and in my physical practice. Yeah. Because really, as the body, physically, you are connected spiritually. Everyone, you know what I mean? I feel everyone is at some point, but you could take whatever your spirituality is and connect it with your practice. Yeah, you really, like. really you can. And that would take us almost to Julie's profession mm-hmm. of being Reiki because you're actually working the energetic self. Right. And right. when that energetic self gets balanced and connected, that is almost a spiritual sense to the two years, to, in, in my opinion. It's, mm-hmm. it's like a spiritual sense that begins to happen. I know that's what happened to me because I didn't mm-hmm. know anything about yoga. I didn't read about it. I just had these tapes. It had these people. Just had them tell me to open my heart up to the universe. I was like, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, how you do that, you know. So, yeah, it, um, it, it, the modern style of yoga it doesn't uh, address that as much no but if it happens to you personally yeah then that's a different story you know what i mean but it's not like we're pushing anything specific yeah because they get that confused with um the hindu or the buddhist religion right that came after that was like tacked on when it got into india and it finally became part of their physical culture and they began to stylize it and they began to strengthen their youth with the 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 um the form of what it of the the postures um then it became then the the so-called um more deeper religious uh philosophy began to get attached to it and i don't even like to call it religious it's still like a a philosophical side Mm -hmm. uh to it Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, and all the different styles in the Japa, Raja Yoga, and all that, which is all the phil- philosophical side. So you can really split it into two. The physical postures, if that's all you like, fine. Or the philosophy, if that's all you like, do that. Or the blending, mm-hmm. which is kind of like where you go, where I go, where a lot of teachers go and try to incorporate some of that. Because in our Western world, we're so devoid, devoid of, our, of our stillness and ourself, our connectedness. We, all, it's not, we always want to be on the outward side instead of getting on the inside of us. Mm-hmm. And that's where um, the, the purest part of ourselves really is. What I'm hearing is it's more about connecting with your own personal spirituality as yes. opposed right. to yes. exactly. subscribing to a religion exactly. that has a set um, form or rules or beliefs. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah right. And that's kind of what I did because I'm a Christian too. Exactly. And when, we, when in the trainings, you, you learn the philosophy, you read the books yes. and, and, you learn and, and it's all of a sudden you're going like, Hmm, you know, mm-hmm. you start the question, you start to, to really uh, go like, okay, well, how does this apply to where I am? Well, then that opened a whole new doorway for me to expand and open it and understand myself so much better. Cause I had pigeonholed myself. You know, I had pigeonholed myself with my spirituality. Mm-hmm. And I was the only one who did that, mm-hmm. you know, to be and then to be more open to ideas because a lot of the underlying things are very connected anyway, in my opinion, mm-hmm. from what I had uh, interpreted for my, yeah. But yeah, yeah there's a lot more in common than that. Oh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly, yeah. So it's not an intimidating thing. So you can hack on, I mean, you can be in a yoga class when I taught at this one club that had a lot of internationals. Oh, it's great. You know, you'd have uh, the Americans in there. You'd have a, maybe a guy, a, you know, your token guy, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and then you would have... Um, some of the uh, you know Asians would be in there, and then I would have uh, some uh, people that were of Indian descent, mm-hmm. and it was so cool because it was just a, a, a you know they were certainly all had different backgrounds of what the, what their religious right. would, uh, beliefs would have been, but they're all doing their yoga, they're all attaching on whatever they want to attach, and I'm giving out the language for how, whatever they want to take out of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So it's really not a religion. Yeah. It's not a religion, and and that's one of the biggest things that um, some religions have against yoga is that they will say that it's a religion and. Right. and 
and really uh, turn people off of, of the yoga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, then, let's uh, wrap this up. Is there any any takeaways you want to put out there for people uh, interested? And in, uh, I think I think we've given them a lot of information, a lot of think about for people getting into yoga or or seeing what different types are out there for them. Uh, what you know? Yeah. Well, I I would like people to understand that yoga is a healing medicine. It's really healing medicine. Yeah, we look at it as if it were exercise, and yes, it is. And you know, we lo look at it as uh, you know being able to gain uh, physical strength, and yes, you will do that. But it's magic. It's most, it's best and strongest magic is that it's a healing medicine for the uh, for the mind, for the spirit. Excellent, yeah. excellent. And of course, here is Claire. Yeah, it's clear we have yoga on Tuesdays, uh, afternoon, uh, 12 to 1. And we have uh, an evening class. Well, I forgot Wednesday in my new class. We have uh, yoga Wednesday, 12 to 1, and Thursday, 7.30 in the evening. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And if you're not in the... Uh... And private classes, private <laughs> sessions, too, for people that aren't uh, interested. But private sessions are nice, too, um, if someone is timid about coming into a class, and that's like they're very, very timid and firm with that timidity, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, doing a private is a nice way for them to get a flavor up, to, to feel it, to go through some postures and, and understand the process and feel good about getting into a group. Excellent. For those not, not in maybe the Westmoreland County, Pittsburgh area, uh, where how would some someone go by go about looking for yoga in their area? What would be the best method? Yeah, well, of course, looking at your local health clubs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, going online, maybe Googling up local studios. Uh, yoga Alliance, too. Could yeah, yoga, to yoga Alliance will have a list of, uh, of instructors. Yeah. Who are... And even Yoga Fit, uh, which is a company that uh, we were trained by, uh, they have a listing of instructors on their uh, site, too. You can punch in, you know, your demographics and find someone that way too excellent mm -hmm. well thank you thank you everybody for joining us that was a great conversation uh, and thank you for joining us on Seclair uh, Chatterbox please go to seclair.com for past episodes and uh, see when we record this live you can join us in the chat room and ask us any questions of our experts or whatever topics we're talking about uh, if you have any comments or ideas for future sh shows in the future uh, please email me at mike at seclair.com and uh, please continue this conversation on our blog in the comments for this episode at seclair.com slash blog and we'll see you next time in the chatterbox.